Hello, my name is Jennifer Steck. I live in Lexington, Kentucky, and I have been a Charlotte Mason educator for over 10 years. I founded and currently direct the lower, excuse me, the middle and upper schools at Overstone uh, Cooperative School in Nicholasville, Kentucky. So uh, several years ago when my daughter was in the, I guess probably in the eighth grade, I decided to start thinking about developing a transcript for her eventual application to college if she chose to go to college, which she did. She just graduated in May of this year. This year is 2019. And we developed a transcript over the years and, and I developed a uh, kind of an automated transcript in Numbers, which is on the Mac platform, but I think it should be pretty transferable to Excel as well. But we created this transcript uh, format so that it would be easy to update and easy to calculate, but most important so that it would look professional and um, so it would just present a good impression to any school to which she applied. So I have been asked for this dozens of times and rather than um, writing out a detailed uh, tutorial on how it works, I thought I would do a video. And that way I could just share a link with you and you can share a link with anyone you think may be interested in this and uh, in putting the file, hopefully in the comments of this video, uh, it might be e easy for you to create your own transcript for your child. So this does require uh, some spreadsheet skill. I'm not going to say that it's a tremendous amount, uh, as long as you don't um, mess with the formulas too much. But even if you do and you're like, oh, man, I just messed that up, you can always just go download a fresh copy of the, of the file and start over again. So I want to show you how this works, and uh, hopefully uh, you will be able to create your own transcript for your, for your child. So, okay. So let's begin with kind of looking at it overall. We are, let's see, we are looking at, and I have just made this person up out of thin air and the parents and birth date, address, et cetera. We are looking at Elizabeth Benson, who lives in Alexandria, Virginia. And on the left side of the transcript, we have her vital information. Now, I will say I do have a brother uh, who has been the vice president of admissions at a university in North Carolina, and he gave me some really good advice for putting together a transcript. So a lot of this format is based on his advice. Uh, so the student information is on the left, and the school information is on the right. You see her phone number, her personal email, her date of birth, and then um, her parents' names. And on the right would be her homeschool name and obviously the address of her home school is the same as her home. And then what you see under additional courses taken is just one of, I'm sure there are many ways, but one way to demonstrate um, how she has taken classes, not only at home school, but also maybe at a co-op, uh, through a dual enrollment program at a local school, it could be anywhere really in the country. And then she's also trained uh, under a, a professor. We'll, we'll see what, what she has done there as well. Okay, so we began this transcript in the eighth grade because that is when she started taking classes. Now, if you want to start this transcript prior to the eighth grade, I suppose that you could and perhaps um, squeeze in seventh and eighth grade courses by uh, even doing this, adding a seven slash eight, so people can see that, or seven and eight and then you could have those courses there, but generally schools um, that we've talked to at least, I don't wanna say this as a blanket statement, but schools that we've talked to really prefer that the high school credits be in the eighth grade or later. Uh, that year, she only took a few classes as she was kind of getting her feet wet in high school, and she took health and PE, and she earned one credit and made an A. Um, and you can see that, where did she take this? She took this, and we've got this superscript here of a one at the co-op. And then she also took a financial literacy. In this case, it was a, a Dave Ramsey personal finance course. 
and that was worth half a credit and then did a high school level typing course which again was worth half a credit so what i'd like for you to see here is that uh, this column which doesn't make sense now and which eventually will not be visible is where the magic happens so to speak so she earned one credit for health and PE, and let's say, okay, she's made an A, so she gets four points, four grade points. And so let's look at the grade scale. If you make an A, you get four value points, and this is the case. We don't have weighted classes in, in homeschool, or at least we don't at our house. <laughs> so we do a four-point scale. An A is a four, an A minus is a 3.7, a B plus 3.3, and a B three, uh, and so, so on and so forth. So if she makes an, an A, she has a 4.0. Uh, if she makes an A minus, she has a 3.7. And all I'm doing in here is saying how many credits, I'm entering a one, and what was her grade. I don't do anything. You can see that, that when I uh, put my cursor on this column here, which is E, you can see that this has a formula in it. So look down here and you can see that this has a formula that's looking up in the grade scale looking up what value to give her based on the grade that I input. So I'm going to change that back to an A, and I want to note to you that here in a half credit, you can see that we're not getting a 4.0 for an A because it was only half a credit. And if we gave a 4.0, then it would, um, it would really mess up the cumulative GPA. So uh, two half credits is a whole credit, and you can see when you have a whole credit that is an A, uh, she did get four points total. But down here, well, let's go to the total credits first. This is another formula that shows you the sum of the credits that she earned. And so you have some more space here to put in additional classes, additional credits in their final grade. And so I could add here, let's say, um, oh, let's say she did some basket weaving for a half a credit and she made a B. She wasn't a superior basket weaver she was she was good um, and you can see here that she has a one she's given a 1.5 but if she had a very intensive basket weaving program and made an a she would have a four so you can add classes credits and final grades here below and I've created up to seven classes uh, per year um, in eighth ninth tenth and eleventh grades so again, it's adding up the total credits. You can see as we enter additional credits, it, it, um, the credits increase in, under total credits and her cumulative credits change and her cumulative GPA changes. So let's go to the next year when she was in grade nine and she took algebra one, it's at home since there's no superscript. She took three, four classes at co-op and then she also trained in classical guitar under a local professor at Arlington University, and I gave her a, a half credit for that. Now, you might be asking, well, where is, where is the column that shows us this? And it is column K, which at the very end, before you print, you are going to hide this column. But I'm gonna let you see it for now so that you can see that the very same magic happens um, for grade level nine. And as you can see, the total credits are added up for this particular year, but the cumulative credits add her prior credits plus the new credits to 7.5, and her cumulative GPA, as you can see, add up all of the grade values on a 4.0 scale, and add up the new grade values, and then um, average them with her new cumulative credit uh, amount. All right, moving down to grades 10 and 11, the very same situation here, only in 10 and 11, she was taking um, a, a greater load, and you might say than her ninth grade year. She was taking mostly one credit classes except another year of classical guitar. Of course, you can give however much credit you want. If they only did half a year of economics, you give obviously half a credit, or if they did some intensive classical guitar, then maybe one credit um, instead of a, a half credit. And uh, again, the total credits, the cumulative credits now add up uh, her prior credits plus the new credits, and the cumulative GPA is now adding up um, three years. The same thing happens in grade 11, 
cumulative credits, cumulative GPA, now based on four years, and the same thing happens. I do need to update this one because instead of plan, she is now graduated, so it is total. These are her final grades. And cumulative credits, of course, this is a made up person, by the way, this is not my daughter, but this is, a, this is made up. And although these are similar to the classes, uh, some of the classes my daughter did take, and you can see now that she has added in her 11th and 12th grade year dual enrollment classes and she took them at in this case alexandria christian college and i put here the actual course number and the course title so that if she does apply to this school the school where she took the dual enrollment classes they will see ah okay that's easy she took bl 101 and bl 102 and that's six credits and personal evangelism that's nine credits college credits so that's easy for them to look up but it's also easy when she applies to a different school for them to look up the transferability of that class and i went over this in my college presentation which i'll also um, link to under this video, but uh, but it, it'll be easy for them to see, okay, if I want to know if I can give her um, a commensurate number of credits at my university, I can look up the university where she took her dual enrollment class, look up this code, and see if uh, we have an apples to apples course that I can give her credit for. So that's kind of nice to provide for, um, for the new school. And since so she is done uh, with the school, we'll put that she has actually earned that credit. Okay, so her final GPA, as you can see, is pretty good. A 3.78 cumulative final grade, or final GPA. And so here's where we have her academic summary. Her graduation date, um, it's important to have that on there because you are often submitting your transcripts pretty early in the year. And um, they do generally like to know when your child will graduate, if it's a December graduation, and they might be eligible for starting school in January, or if it's a May graduation and they're eligible for starting school in the fall. So as you are updating your um, transcript, you might find that, just as I, I updated it here because she has finished school, but if, you, if, if your child hasn't finished school, what you can do is put their planned courses here and you would just delete this, you would delete credit earned and final grade because they haven't actually taken the classes yet. But if they're applying to school at the beginning of their 12th grade year, then it's nice for them to see what, what they plan to take uh, in their 12th grade year. And one of the reasons too that this is important is that some state schools have requirements for a certain number of language arts credits, a certain number of uh, foreign language credits and so on and so forth. So they can uh, very easily see if you have met all of their minimum requirements. Okay. All right. So as we can see, um, we, are, we have the cumulative GPA under her graduation date and her total credits. Now, uh, I'm not sure what the total credits are in all the other states in the United States. Here, it depends on whether or not you're college bound or not. It's somewhere between 20 and 22, I think. And it's um, not very difficult in a Charlotte Mason um, home to achieve all of your credits because the piece that you have laid out is so very rich that this cumulative learning aspect uh, is, is just wonderful. And you find that you graduate with many more credits than you need. So please do not uh, think that you're really going to be searching for credits at the end of your high school experience. You probably won't be. Um, if you have taken the SAT or the ACT, uh, you can put this um, here in this cell, but you could also update this to um, include like a SAT subject test, like the math subject test, um, and put that score, or you could just change these all together to say AP biology score, for example, put a four or a five here. So what other, whatever information, um, you can even delete, honestly, you can even delete the cumulative GPA right here and, and fill it in with something different because the cumulative GPA is actually right here at the bottom of the, of the 12th grade year. So these, these blanks are really for, what, for you to put in what you think is most relevant to your child's experience. Okay, and then as I said, I think it's very nice that many universities do want you to submit, especially if you're a homeschool, uh, homeschooling family, 
your grading scale. Uh, so what I did is I took the grading scale of the school to which my daughter wanted to apply, her first choice, and I made it our home grading scale. And so when they are looking at our grades, um, they're looking at her dual enrollment classes. They already know what their grading scale is because she's going to the school where she took her dual enrollment classes. Um, we are, our homeschool classes are on that grading scale and virtually all of our co-op classes are also on the same grading scale. So uh, that just helps the university to see that there is an apples to apples um, um, understanding of, of what an A is uh, in high school as well as college. And at the very bottom of the transcript, I have here that uh, sort of what they would have on a public school transcript, which would be um, some sort of seal or affirmation that this is an official transcript. So um, just a simple statement, I hereby affirm that this is the official transcript for Elizabeth Benson. And then of course you could put your, you know, your child could sign her, her name, um, put student, the date, you could sign your name as the parent or administrator. You could do the primary teacher and the administrator. For us, uh, my husband and I signed it and um, as her as her teacher. So uh, that is, uh, th those are a couple of options. Now, when you go to print this out, as I said earlier, you want to hide this column. But because of all of these nice merged cells up here, you cannot hide E. So what you do is you hide the numbers by changing their color. <laughs> you change the text color to white, and voila, they are gone. And now you have a very nice and clean transcript. I'm gonna show you what it looks like if I go to print, and you can see that it's going to print out on one page. Um, and I don't even, I don't even think I had to do fit to page, so that was that was good. Okay, uh, I in the um, in the file that I'm going to link below this presentation, I have a completely blank transcript, and you can start with this one and just refer back to the sample. This blank transcript has the very same formulas as you can see, and so for example, once you filled all of this in, let's say you're starting. Um, high school this year and you're obviously going to want to change this to nine and your child is in ninth grade and taking classes this year and so you might want to obviously change the dates the years here and uh, let's say that you're you're done with the ninth grade year we're in may or june of 2020 and we want to put here that they've taken english one credit b plus grade let's see, algebra one, let's say, one credit, A, grade, uh, let's say physical science, one credit, A minus, and so on and so forth. Let's say that you decide we have done, we've been a Charlotte Mason educator since the very beginning, we've done composer studies since he was in year zero or six years old, and we're going to count all of that cumulative learning as one credit of music appreciation at an A, et cetera. So you can see that you should be able to type all of this in, and as, as long as you don't delete these formulas here or down here by accident, um, you should be able to type all of this in, and it will automatically calculate it for you. So I hope this has been helpful. Most of all, I hope it is a blessing to you. I hope that it saves you time and saves you a headache and that you think, wow, this is one less thing that I have to worry about um, when uh, planning for high school and planning for uh, the college application or school application process. I can tell you it has been such a joy to look back on the last 10 years of home education with Charlotte Mason's philosophy of education and just see the fruit that has been born out of this rich feast of subjects and habit training and book study and just really applying the principles to all parts of our life, not just the school hours. And um, it's, it's just been such a joy to, to develop some of these tools and then share them with people and and see that it's we're we're one community that can really support one another. So I hope this is a blessing to you. And if you have any questions, feel free to comment on the video. And I will do my best to get back to you relatively soon. Um, thank you again for joining me.